dollar. What comes to mind when you hear the words rethinking a dollar? Yeah, well, I mean, I rethought the dollar personally a long time ago. I hold, I hold very few dollars. Mm -hmm. I think the you know people need to realize that dollars are only currency or fiat currency, better put, meaning the only thing they really do is exchange for goods. Uh, and only in America to boot. You really can't use dollars uh, in many other countries. Whereas gold and silver are real money because not only can you can transact in them worldwide, but they also serve as a medium of uh, they serve as a store of value and have for thousands of years. Right now, with the rethinking the dollar concept, my goal here is to basically promote and encourage what I call monetary literacy as well as financial education. Now, in your opinion, is there a distinction between monetary literacy or monetary education? and financial education, are they both one and the same? Well, look, you know, when I think of finance, I think of economics and supply and demand. When I think of uh, monetary money, I think of people not understanding the difference between, uh, you know, inflation and, uh, and, and money printing or price inflation and money printing and not understanding the difference, as I said, between currency and money. And again, there's a definition of money. I mean, it, it not only has to be fungible and exchange of value, but it has to prove as a store of value, which which dollars, euros, yen, and the preceding 599 fiat currencies, which all failed, do not do. Right. Now, when it comes to education in general, as you're aware of, here in, here in the United States as well as globally, monetary education, financial education is not taught in school. And so do you think that's by design or you think that's a part of just keeping everyone from using the ability to critically, critically think for themselves or what? What's your thought on the education system not encouraging about education? Well, you know, it's funny because everyone you know, mocks the education system in general. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking back to my education. I was a finance major, so I took, you know, three or four years of finance. And then I was a, I took the CFA program. And it's not so much that there's much uh, propaganda. I mean, that they're sitting there saying, you must be a Keynesian. I mean, I remember they taught us what Keynesianism is, mm -hmm. uh, but it's not like it's propaganda. It's just that it, for, for what's going on in the real world today, it doesn't really help you much to learn in the books. You need some practical experience in a world that doesn't, that no longer reflects those uh, laws of nature, or that it, they haven't reflected those laws of, as I call it, economic mother nature for probably the past decade. Of course, she always wins. Mm -hmm. uh, once, once people uh, realize what's going on, it may be too late because ultimately trying to manipulate markets by one, do, uh, manipulating interest rates, and two, actually moving markets overtly and covertly. I mean, you have central banks out there that tell you that their policy now is to buy stocks. Right. Uh, you know, you need to realize that it's not just what's in the books, but what's really going on. And more importantly, the ramifications of these uh, hideous, as David Stockman calls them, deformations of both the markets and the underlying economies. Right. Now, you mentioned just earlier in starting your and in, in giving an explanation on the situation that something is happening globally. And so if you were to give a State of the Union address or State of the Globe address, how would Andy Hoffman start off his, his, his State of the Union or State of the Globe address? It would be that simple. I'd go back to August 15, 1971. That's the day that the United States reneged on the Bretton Woods Agreement, which essentially was a partial gold standard. And the reason we did it was because of the Vietnam War and other social programs, we could not afford to have a nation that was tied to gold. It needed to print money to pay for these things. And because the rest of the world allowed us to do this, again, everyone says, well, the United States abandoned the gold standard. No, everyone did, because all the other partners could have said, you can't do that. But since they all, the politicians and bankers all have the same selfish interest, they said, yeah, that's fine. You know, we probably got quite some time before it'll even be an issue. Uh, you know, fast forward to the year 2000, uh, and that was to me, the peak of when I call the, the charge card of the world was, was charged up because in 1971, there was essentially no government debt or material uh, debt for individuals. That's why people could own houses and have good, and even on modest jobs and take vacations and, and that kind of thing. Uh, but, you know, in 2000, the card got charged up and the bubbles burst and that was the peak of the economy of our lifetimes. Uh, so Alan Greenspan led an attempt to try to revive uh, this through through uh, zero interest rate policy, and he got it going for another seven or eight years uh, with the help from his uh, protege, uh, Bernanke, who came on in 2006, just in time to watch that echo bubble collapse. 
2008, the system broke entirely. We passed peak debt. All the central bank tools that were out there uh, were essentially used, or you know, whatever was left of them had been used in the last couple of years, to the point where anything that the central banks do makes things worse. There's a term called pushing on a string, which means you're doing something that's futile. And in printing new money right now, when you're past peak debt, all you do is make things worse. You, you increase debt, of course, uh, which reduces the ability of governments and corporations and individuals to progress economically. And of course, you devalue the, the currencies, uh, which you know eventually causes political, economic, and social instability. So that's where we stand today. What I would say is today, this minute that we are speaking, is the singularly worst point for the global economy of our lifetimes.